Joining us on the Heaster Automotive Group hotline is Canes insider Adam Gold. We're going to keep this short, Adam, because there's not a lot to say. We've already recapped game three. So in game <laughs> four, you get one answer beyond fix the power play. How do the Canes send it to a game five? I think Rod should go back to the way he envisioned the forward lines working. And that's, uh, I, you might leave the top line together, but that's as, as disappointing as he's probably been. That's Yevgeny Kuznetsov playing in a more advanced role, not playing with fourth line players, not playing with Jesperi Kotkaniemi and Steph Nason, but playing where he belongs between elite players. Deal with the defensive lapses. Deal with it. You have to. Uh, and maybe that's Svechnikov and Martin Natchez on his wings. but And that line was a defensive disaster when it was together. But it gives you the potential for offensive potency. Uh, let Jack Jury play where Jack Jury belongs. And I would put Martinuk and Stahl back together. And maybe utilize that as your fourth line. Um, because I think in the grand scheme of things, what has happened right now, while the forward lines at five on five haven't been the problem, the power play is the problem. Uh, I also think that they're not generating enough really good scoring chances at five on five. I think there's a lot, a lot of empty calories in their puck possession. Adam Gold, Kane's insider, join us on Next Up this morning alongside Paul Ihander. I'm Graham Hill. Adam, we won't keep you long just because I know you're tired from sleep deprived. Also tired. I have of a ask. show to do later, so I have I have I have nowhere to go. That yeah, that's true. You got to come in either way. <laughs> uh, but I know you're also tired of a, as answering twitters on, or asking that's answering fine. questions on Kane's Twitter. See, I can't even talk. Answering questions on Kane's Twitter about the power play, but I'm tired of and this this question is going to be a little facetious. That I'm getting ready to ask you, Adam. When at the at some point, when does the happy, feel good moment of making a six consecutive straight playoff feeling start to wear off? And do you expect a little more out of this team than what we're seeing right now on the ice? I know each game's been close, but when when do when is when do you take it to the next level as a franchise? I think it's already there. Uh, getting swept, losing the series in five games, losing the series is going to be a massive disappointment for Hurricanes fans. For the players, they they had uh, incredible expectations in, internally for what this roster was. Look at the roster. The roster's good enough. Uh, they just haven't – honestly, they didn't play as well as they needed to play against the Islanders. They just, they're just just significantly better than the Islanders and faster than the Islanders. Uh, they're not faster than the Rangers. They're not better than the Rangers, certainly not significantly. And actually – I disagree with everything I've read about how good Carolina has been five on five. I think they were significantly better at five on five in game two. And in the first period of game one, and maybe the first seven or eight minutes of the second period of of game three, rather, uh, and maybe the first seven or eight minutes of the second period. But once the Rangers scored that shorthanded goal, I I thought New York was the better team. Carolina, I mean, they got into overtime credit to them but I thought the Rangers were actually better at five on five than Carolina over the last 30 minutes of regulation. Uh, So I I think the five on five numbers are always going to be skewed by shot attempts and, uh, and shot total shots on goal totals. Uh, But I think you judge it by how dangerous were your scoring chances. And I thought the Rangers were uh, more dangerous over the last 30 minutes. I thought Piotr Kajetkov was one of the best players in the game last night. Yeah, the Cavs uh, were very good. Canes insider Adam Gold join us, join him at noon today here on 99.9 The Fan. And, of course, over the weekend as he hosts pregame and postgame and in-game for game four between the Canes and the Knicks. Appreciate you, Adam. Thanks. You got it. All right. Canes Rangers game four. That is tomorrow night. That is a 7 o'clock start. Adam Gold will host Stormwatch at 6 o'clock. All the action here on 99.9 The Fan. I know people will be out there tailgating in all of their red and all of their black and all of their whatever alternate colors that they want to to bring on to the barn. And just remember, let things stick in your head a little bit. Three to two overtime. Four to three double overtime. Four to three. Those are the three games that the Canes have lost. There is a reality that you have to come with into a game four. And it is repeated over and over and over again. And it has to be repeated by fans 
who want to stay optimistic and upbeat about coming back. It is not an impossible hill to climb. It is not an impossible task. Is it improbable? Yeah, it is improbable. The Carolina Hurricanes are not the best team on the ice in this series. Why? Because they're down three games to none. It's not due to luck. It's not due to lack of hustle. It's not due to the will to win games. You lost three games. It's as simple as that. You did not score as many goals as the other team. And that other team on the ice is better than you. Quickly on the power play, Sebastian Ajo was asked after the game, <laughs> do you have any answers? And just like about here we go. I, I don't know what it is exactly. I wish I would have an answer for you. I mean, if I would have an answer, we, you know, score some goals every once in a while. But uh, yeah, they, uh, they. I mean, again, I, like I don't know. It, it's just uh, it's tough. I mean, they're they're done a good job out of it. They're uh, goalie. I've made some saves, obviously, but. Uh, Having said that, that's, uh, that's, not, that's not good enough, and it's on us to uh, find a way. Find a way. Us. Team. Carolina Hurricanes. We need to find a way. But right at the start, I don't have an answer. Coaches have better draw something up. Better make, better make a tweak. Because 15 opportunities and no cash-ins, no smoke, no sirens, no Wade yelling goal. No Petey Pablo, no tear off your shirts, no wave the towels. No free Burberry biscuit. Someone needs to find that answer, and very quickly. We are all staring at the same chalkboard, ladies and gentlemen. We're all sitting in that same room looking up, going, all right, we know what the problem is, right? Igor Shesterkin and the four players skating around in front of him, trying to stick to what they know and what they need to do defensively on a power play. It is up to the five guys on the other end of things. And no, unfortunately, we cannot decline power plays, although that was a stroke of near genius, Graham. They have to figure this out. They have to stare at it. And I don't care who you got to bring in to figure this one out. Adam Gold thought he had an answer. He thinks he has an answer. And it might be the right answer. It might be getting back to that simple forward play and surrounding Kuzi with some quality players that he can create for. Because that's what happens, right? Iron sharpens iron. More cliche, Paul. But there it is. But there it is. And they got time to figure it out because they're going to practice today at noon. And they're going to hustle back out there on the ice at 7 o'clock tomorrow night. We're going to sit through an anthem, and they're going to drop the puck. And you're all going to get excited. Big Mike's going to blow the Vuvuzela. We're all going to shout, let's go, Canes. And we're going to get nutty and see decibel meters and all that kind of noise. And we're going to listen to Free Fall by Tom Petty while T-shirts fall from the Raptors. But... We need to solve the problem first. And the problem is is that special teams haven't been as special as we want them to be. And the better team on the ice is not the Carolina Hurricanes because they have zero wins in a best of seven. If necessary is a very scary thing, folks. If necessary is the worst thing to add to the end of any sentence. I'm Graham Hill with three things you need to know right now from 999 The Fan. Game four of the second round series between your Carolina Hurricanes and the New York Rangers is tomorrow night at 7 p.m. Our local pregame coverage begins at 6 with Stormwatch hosted by Adam Gold. Mike Maniscalco and Trip Tracy will have the radio call right here on The Fan. It's a top 25 matchup in college baseball on News Plus 99.3 and 96.5 FM. As number 25, NC State begins its weekend series against number 10, Virginia, tonight. The first pitch is scheduled for 7 p.m. The North Carolina Courage return to the pitch this Sunday at CPKC Stadium as they travel to take on the Kansas City Current at 6 p.m. You can watch the match on NSWSL+. Find these stories and more on WRLSportsFan.com.
Paul Leihander here, Instagram Hill on the ones and the twos. When you were 14 years old, maybe there are some 14-year-olds sitting out there listening to us, probably wondering, you know, should I go get a gig somewhere? Should I, should I go work at the fast food place? Or am I going to do some lawn care? Is there enough allowance for me? There's a 14-year-old by the name of Kevin Sullivan. He spells it C-A-V-A-N, who just signed the largest homegrown contract in Major League Soccer history. Again, 14 years old. He's gonna, he signed with the Philadelphia Union. His brother already plays in their farm system uh, or whatever, his club system already. Uh, his mom played soccer. His grandfather coached collegiate soccer. Um, it's, it's, it's a lifelong passion of a kid who says he's just boring. And here's the, here's the deal with this one is that at 18, so he's 14 right now. Apparently, they've been scouting him since he was 10. He's played in the Philadelphia Union Next system and has played at the international level. At 18, he already has a prearranged transfer to go play Premier League soccer. He will move on and play at Manchester City in a $5 million transfer fee. Manchester City basically saying, the MLS is good enough for you to develop him in his teen years. By the time you get him to us, he should be good to go. And he has dual citizenship with Germany. So he could play for Team USA, or if he doesn't make that cut, he could go play for Team Germany. Now, that could be even a taller ask, let's be honest, based on how soccer is across this world. But he has a couple of options. 14 years old. 14. At 14, I had just started work doing cleanup at the IGA market in a butcher's department. I was working as a uh, as a as a young freshman or a young yeah, getting ready to go into my first year of high school at the pro shop at a uh, at a tennis tennis pro shop at the Kenston Country Club. So when you're working in the pro shop, were you actually like selling things or did they have you cleaning up and stocking shelves? They had me going out and resurfacing the clay court. You were resurfacing a clay court? Yep. Refilling up a cooler. And it was so weird because, like, instead of doing it, like, you, you know, you do the lines, make it white again, and then to resurface, they had a golf cart that you would attach, like, a, a surf, you know, kind of like what you use at a baseball game when they resurface the dirt. Yeah, 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 okay, yeah. In the infield. A little spreader. They'd have that, yeah, they'd have a spreader, and you'd attach that, and you would always, like, drive around, but I would always, like, knock over one, like, sprinkler system, and it would just, like, go off, and <laughs> so it would start spraying, <laughs> Court with you know playing time would get delayed. You know you have a bunch of old gentlemen yelling at you, and you're just like, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm like, just driving a golf cart and having fun. I'm right, clip. 14 years old. I wish I, I wish I could have been playing pro soccer at 14 years old. Sure, any yeah. pro sport, any pro sport. Yeah, undeniable. That lawn care man. I I have an ultimate goal. I'm not full Hank Hill, King of the Hill. For those of you who know that animated series, where I want a really nice lawn, but I do want a really nice lawn. <laughs> not quite like that. A neighbor of mine out this morning, like, clearly had must have worked in groundskeeping somewhere because he's out there and he's got these really great lines in his lawn and it is super green. I'm going to go knock on his door, I think, when I go home just to go, dude, what are you doing and how can I copy you? Thanks. For how can I be you? <laughs> Thanks. This was at 645 this morning. He's out there on his lawn. Put, it, it looked gorgeous, dude. Whenever, whenever we're just having small talk around the cubicles in the office, Paul will always tell us about how he just makes you know casual conversation with his neighbors. And Paul's a good neighbor. I can, I can tell that. But I imagine Paul and his neighbors are like the king of the hill crew. <laughs> Crack they'll, open they'll, a beer. They'll start the talking about yeah. They'll start talking about a sporting event, and then they're just like they get into, it and then Paul's like, let me walk to my let me walk to my garage real quick and gets a uh, gets a nice um. Paul seems like a uh, a. Uh, Dos Equis kind of There guy. you go. Well done, Graham. You know me a little bit more well than you know. Pops yeah. it open and then talks more about the frustrations of the Canes with his neighbors. With yeah, the I get hour. that a lot. I do. I do. Those conversations, they all know where I'm at. <laughs> they know where I'm at. Uh, we know where the Panthers are going to be this weekend. Panthers have rookie camp. They signed everybody, Graham. Everybody under contract as of yesterday. Their entire rookie team. Uh, they have assigned numbers to the team. It looks like uh, Xavier Leggett is taking his South Carolina number, the wide receiver they drafted, moved up for in the first round. He's going to be wearing 17. So he'll be very familiar to those who are out there at rookie camp. Jonathan Brooks, the uh, Texas running back, who probably won't see much action, probably just do some run-throughs and some uh, in terms of book reading. He's going to have 24. Chow Smith-Wade, 26, the corner. Uh, Michael Barrett, the linebacker, 41. Trevin Wallace, 
56. Another linebacker, Jatavian Sanders, the tight end. They went to go get a uh, move up for 85. And Jane Crumity, uh, defensive end, will be 96. But Panthers rookie minicamp, yeah. NFL football just right around the corner, ladies and gentlemen. Like preseason games are in the next 90 days. We start playing NFL games in the next 90 days. The Hall of Fame game is under 90 days away. Already looking forward to that as well. Uh, I'm really sad they're not doing training camp this year down in Spartansburg because I just imagine Leggett being like a kid at summer camp. Being oh, like, man, sure. I, I love being here and roasting, roasting marshmallows and everything. <laughs> it back to my childhood. <laughs> going to go out and find a place to hang in with some of his uh, former hangs down there? Yep. That'd be okay. Uh, Charles Lee, brand new head coach of the Charlotte Hornets. Uh, spoke yesterday about getting the job. Four-year deal, former Boston assistant, his first head coaching job in the NBA. Uh, I'm trying to keep all my emotions together right now, but I am very excited. Um, uh, I've seen everything that's been going on with the Hornets organization ever since ownership has kind of taken over, and I'm just thrilled that they're going to take a chance on me. And so I'm looking forward to helping build something really special in Charlotte with the help of ownership and Jeff and the front office and the coaching staff that I'm looking forward to putting together as well. You know, you might as well be optimistic. The team was 21-61. and 61. You know, <laughs> I'm like, you Paul, know, I, Paul, what are you going to say? Well, you have kids. I remember when I was growing up, the hit show on Disney Channel I used to watch with a Bridget, Bridget, uh, Bridget Mendler. Good luck, Charlie. Good Love luck, Charles. Show. Good luck, Charles. Right. That's all I have to say. Hey, he's got Brandon Miller. LaMelo Ball should be healthy next year, right? Keyword should be. Should be. That's been the story of his career so far. He had 21, 21 wins. What's the improvement, right? 25. Frank Vogel got fired yesterday from the Suns, and he was 49 and 33. And they're already looking at replacing him with Mike Budenholzer in Phoenix.